Uh, Governor, the last person to speak, and then you have to be going. Uh, uh, I'm going to call Andy Wedding, who's coming up, who works in insurance. Andy has just a, a statement to make about small business health insurance. Andy Wedding. Governor, I know you need to be going shortly. So, uh, on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much for coming to Marshfield and listening to our issues and to our concerns. You are to be applauded in addition to Insurance Commissioner Joe Murphy for the wonderful job that you've done, your leadership, in reducing health care insurance premiums for small businesses. But I do have a question for you. Yes. I know that uh, through your leadership, 235 out of the 274 rate premium increases were actually rejected in the insurance division. And my question is, what are your plans going forward? Thank you, Andy. Um, and <clears throat> thank you, um, thank you all for the uh, extraordinary presentations. Billy, yours was, uh, I mean, they were all terrific, but yours was, I think, particularly uh, important because it's, a, it's an example of how a little bit of investment in the infrastructure can catalyze a lot of other uh, jobs, and that's what we have been uh, about. Andy, to your uh, particular uh, question, we uh, have had some very successful negotiations with the insurers about how to moderate their rate increases going forward. I think that even more important is a bill I signed at the end of, uh, of August that ends or repeals a uh, almost 20-year-old law that used to prohibit small businesses from buying together and getting the buying power that big businesses get. Now you can buy in, in co-ops uh, starting this year. The rules for that will be out very uh, soon. And that will help. Uh, because big businesses, and, and state government for that matter, have a buying power that most small businesses don't. Uh, and this, so that will help. Uh, there's also something that happens with small businesses when, when you have a, an employee, just a single employee, who reaches a milestone birthday, 40, 50, 60 years old, you get, in the, in the law today, um, the insurer is permitted to multiply your rate increase. There's a formula for it, but it's called rate shock. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and the bill gives the commissioner some power to smooth out that rate shock. So that should help uh, as well. Now, a lot of the implementation of this is being worked out over these few weeks since, or a couple months since, uh, since August, but those two things should help. The big play is payment reform. And I think you and I may have talked about this before. Uh, that is um, essentially moving, these are unanimous recommendations from a group that has uh, worked on this with us for the last couple of years. And that is to move from paying for the amount of health care to paying for uh, the outcomes, or the, or the what medical home is a term. Richard, you'll know this term. Med medical home or ACOs, accountable care organizations. Uh, that is a big change. And it's a system-wide change. It will take some legislation, which uh, will move in January, God willing, if, uh, or I should say the voters willing. Uh, and um, uh, the very first recommendation after I got these unanimous recommendations from folks in the industry and advocates and policymakers and so on was go slow, governor. Take five years. Uh, because it's that <coughs> profound a uh, change. I don't think we have five years, to tell you the truth. I think we've got to get control on this of this now, and not just containment, but actually cost reduction. There's a lot of